So this is our second school virtual world. The first we ran with Second Life, but they closed down their team grid. Now this looks like Second Life, but it's run with a program called OpenSim, which is a free open source program. You just have to find somebody to host it for you, or you could certainly host it on your school computers as well. It's the weekend today, so students are allowed to log in if they wish, providing they have permission from home. Uh, because I want parents to know um, what the world is, they can get a bit freaked out otherwise. Uh, but if they're logged in from home, they need to start wearing this um, special clothing. So my special clothing says Senior Moderator, and there's other clothing that uh, shows that they have permission. Uh, there's very few rules in our virtual world. It's mainly regulated by community expectations and by the culture of the community of practice of the students. Uh, there's one main rule, and the rule is everything I do, say or build will make Borelli Island a better place. Kind of covers everything. So here we have a city which we've just opened up. So there's various plots of land and the students are learning how to build and they apply for land and they start to build amazing stuff in the land. Uh, so here is uh, Borelli Art Gallery, which has uh, been built by a student and he has program that front door to open. If I uh, want to I can walk through there, I can sit and uh, I can then, what do I do? I type in up, I say up to uh, go up. So let's do that. So I type the word up and it, it goes up in the air. Now I can stand up and begin to walk around this art gallery. And a uh, similar idea as to what uh, was implemented in our first virtual world, if you saw that. The idea is that we take photographs of real art that is around our school and we upload it into this virtual art gallery that anyone can wander through. Um, really interesting design that the students come up with and obviously it's a work in progress. Um, but it's a pretty impressive one. Oh, we've got a another student who's online right now. I'll, uh, you can see them as a green dot there. I'm going to teleport just outside the city and then I will offer that student to teleport to where I am. Notice that he doesn't have a real name, he has a pretend name. And uh, so we allow the students uh, their own private identity and um, that turns out to create a safe space for them to develop who they are and to develop a reputation in this virtual world and a persona. Okay. So this is the help center. Oh, that's interesting that you can see the text that comes up there as we walk in. And uh, this too is in very early development, but um, looks like it's coming along quite well. And I would imagine this will be populated by objects and scripts and tutorials as time goes by. So here's a map of Borelli Island. Um, we might just go back outside again. and I can actually fly, although I've turned fly off for the students to force them to design their own vehicles. Here's a scripting center, I think. So students will um, put code in here that students can use, other students can use to program the world, to get them started. The way the students learn to program, and most of the time, is that um, they copy code from the internet uh, without knowing what it's going to do and then they experiment from there so for instance if I uh, build if I create an object like that in the world so for instance I might um, make it into a wall so the students very quickly learn how to do this and then they teach each other then I can program that by going into the scripting part of that object so see, I can now program that object to behave any way I want it to. And now what the students do is they copy code that they find on the internet 
and then they um, just see what the object does and then they begin to tinker with that code. Looks like I've got a student here saying hello. <laughs> oh, here he is. So he's he's on here in the weekend and he may be building or exploring. Um, there we go. If I just fly up, oh, he's talking to me, but I'm going to be a bit antisocial. You can see the city beginning to develop over here, but we've got the forest which we walk through over there. In the distance there, you can see the French towers, which I've described in a in another video recently. Uh, in these French towers, uh, the way students climb up the towers is by completing French questions from our Moodle installation. And so Moodle is a learning management system. We put a quiz there, and as they type in the right answers in this world, uh, their chairs go up into the air. Students created a castle up here, and I guess we're trying to create a mythic world here. Um, and if we just go to the map, you can see how big the space is. So that's the island which we've just um, flown over. Uh, but I can also go further up north. So it's quite a large space. It's eight times the size that our original Second Life Island was. If we go all the way up north, I've got plenty of space um, to trial projects with classes. So this is a French class where we're just learning to build and students just making it up as they go. We've only had about um, two hours worth of building time but the kids are learning and now we'll be able to put together a French village. Students are just learning how to upload textures. So any kind of image file can be put on an object here in the virtual world. And so students will be able to put up vocabulary and uh, French works of art and lots of other really fun things. I think this one of the big significances uh, for me of this world is that it's not um, driven by teachers. Uh, no student logs in because they have to. Um, no one's assessed, no one's reported on, no one's told what to do. In fact, the students have skills that I don't actually have. We haven't taught them these skills, they just sort of learn them themselves. Um, it's exciting to watch, uh, and I think it, to me it gives me an insight into learning and also learning communities. And uh, in my recent blogs and tweets, I've become quite clear that I think schooling itself is um, utterly flawed and uh, I'm proposing a community learning model instead. I'm sure a lot of other people are proposing the same idea because there are no formal structures in this world but kids are learning and I think that's what life, life is like and it's what I think our learning structures need to be like um, uh, for our young people.